What's up guys, welcome back uh, to Road to the Two Comic Club and I want to show you guys something. I just happened to switch on Bloomberg and uh, I saw on the side headlines, look at this tiny little blip here. Riot blockchain to buy futures broker launch crypto exchange. That was huge. I'm hoping that I'm one of the few people who found out in terms of the average investor because no one is talking about that. It is not being mentioned at all on CNBC, um, and I just happened to catch it on the side here. So I quickly went on Scott Trade on my phone and bought two call options for them. Uh, January 2019 expiration, you know, like I always do. And then I got, uh, it was a $20 strike because it's currently at like $15, but it's up like $2 today. So it's up like almost 20%. I was up 22% earlier, but now it's up like 16 or so percent. So anyways, I figured why not? Um, I'm just hoping to make, I'm hoping that, that once that news starts to get hit more people, because that's huge. Um, let me let me explain why. Uh, in case anyone's not too familiar with, with stuff, I guess. Uh, the thing that really caught my attention is the crypto exchange. I don't really know much about the futures broker part of it, but just having an exchange in general where people can go and trade and buy and sell currencies because they often will pay uh, fees for that. Like Binance, you have to pay fee, like a commission fee. It's a really small one, but still it's a fee. And with, uh, with as much trading as goes on on a daily basis, having your own exchange is just huge. It's hugely profitable in my opinion. I don't know like the detail. I never checked balance sheets for them or anything, but I'm just guessing that having your own exchange you're gonna make a ton of money. So that's what I think. Um, I also wanna mention that the Dow was down this morning, like it was expected to open down like 188 points and now it's already up. So that is awesome. And yeah, I'm just gonna do some editing. I gotta take a shower, kinda of wake up and uh, I'm just gonna do some more editing and then we'll we'll check back periodically. I don't have any more money to do any more trades, but as long as the Dow is, is up and the NASDAQ is kinda of where it is, uh, I don't think I have any reason to sell anything. So. Hopefully today will be calm. That would be a nice change of pace. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, it's about 10, 15 p.m. now. So um, the market did take a downturn at the very last minute. It seemed like within the last 20 minutes, it went from being up a lot to like down a little bit. So um, let's just see how we did. And then we'll talk about a couple things. All right. So it, believe it or not, it looks like we actually made money today and uh, we're gonna look at a couple of the companies to see why, because I could have swore we were would have finished down. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes here just to see what our balance was yesterday. Of course, now I can't find it. Yeah, so it looks like we made about um, 2,500 or so. So I'm really excited about that. Except, not really excited about what I've been reading after hours. It looks like the Dow might go down again. But then again, it said the Dow was gonna go down yesterday. Like two nights ago, it was gonna go down yesterday, but it actually went up yesterday. So it went from being like down a thousand, you know, after hours, two days, two nights ago, and then yesterday, it went from that to being up 500 and some point. So who knows? A lot can happen in 12 hours, and so uh, I'm not gonna panic yet. I'm just gonna keep uh, my eye on things. I'm if I have to sell some things tomorrow, I'm gonna try to be ready for that. But anyways, so here were the orders again. Bought a couple calls for Riot Blockchain just because I heard they're buying and they're going to make an exchange now. So hopefully they'll make a lot of money with that. And then I bought an even another 5,000 shares in hemp just to make it an even 30,000. I had sold 5,000 shares a while back, so I just wanted to match that up. It wasn't that much money to add that much more. You can see here only 125 bucks. But check it out, Weight Watchers was our biggest gainer today, money-wise. In terms of percentage, we had Win Resorts. And I saw, I think I talked about that the other day. I saw that on TV, how they, they went down a lot more than what the Dow was doing. And they were saying that you can look at, those are some good opportunities to get in because they kind of went down more than what they should have. And they're still decent companies. Now, obviously the CEO of what we got was in that sexual misconduct scandal, but he stepped down as CEO. And I think investors like that. And I think that's probably for the best. And so that I'm looking for this to rebound a little bit more and then I'll look to selling it. Maybe we can get back into the money eventually. Who knows, we still got some time on that one. But anyways, yeah, there's also Twitter had a really good day in their reporting earnings. 
I think tonight. I forget, I'll have to check. We'll, we'll wait till tomorrow, we'll see what happens. Uh, but Tesla did report earnings and that's what we'll talk about after this. But Roku had another good day, I don't know why. <laughs> I might have to check a couple things on that too. Um, but anyways, let's just keep going. Oh, and then GoPro went up 71%, but their, their calls aren't really worth anything anyways. So these kind of moves happen around this stage when they're like really cheap because any really decent move, oh crap. Well, at least we saw the stocks that were up. <laughs> okay, anyways, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, the percentages thankfully are still here. <laughs> so we can see who the losers were. We had Amazon, Universal Display, again going down today, I'm not sure why. Apple, and then Facebook, and then the, our put went down, probably because the QQQ went up, most likely. So, whatever. All right, let's go to the watch list. Snapchat definitely holding it down as the number one performer today on our watch list at least. They had um, they reported better earnings than expected. Pretty sure they still lost money though, but it was not as bad. Uh, Weight Watcher, that's the same thing with Tesla. We'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, but Weight Watchers, um, I was reading articles that they're going to be investing a lot of money into some new, new things. They're going to try to double their, or increase their profit by 50% by 2020 or something like that uh, and I think it was like hold on one second okay so the management announced its goals to top two billion dollars in annual revenue by 2020 which is a more than 50 percent increase from its estimated sales last fiscal year and they're also doing a program where um, some teenagers that are like 13 years old or uh, can get into the program for free so they're really trying to help the the youth which I think is a really uh, nice thing for them to do and I think just overall, people are real excited about them. Plus, they got DJ Khaled now as a spokesperson. And then Oprah is also just really good at selling things. So they're just doing really well. But the, the key is they have a lot of competition, especially like Nutrisystem was one of their big competitors. So uh, we got to keep an eye on things and see how that goes. But they had a really, really good day today, 17%. Um, and then the blockchain one went up. Th this Bitcoin one went up. Um, Arrive blockchain. So three Bitcoin blockchain related things at the top so that was good there was a senate hearing about cryptocurrencies and i didn't really i didn't watch it but i heard it was uh, over, overall as positive so that could kind of bring the prices of cryptocurrencies back up in the you know in the long term so hopefully we'll have some good news coming out of there sprint had a good day so surprisingly a lot of good days even though um, the nasdaq finished down and the dow jones finished down you can see there at the bottom but there were some still some good performers today so let's just keep kind of zipping through this so we can wrap this up here um, ooh, we got Best Buy here. Nice. Domino's Pizza. Nice. We got NVIDIA. A lot of good companies here, guys. A lot of good ones that I like. Zillow. Ba Boeing. Nice. Okay, and then we got Red Hat, Home Depot, Square, Bank of America. Okay, Intel. I think we're in all of those. And so Verizon, I don't think we're in anymore. But um, yeah, so not a bad, not a bad day for those guys. Uh, Netflix is... I feel like Netflix is going to struggle to come back up into like the, the near 300 range just because they ran up so much. It's going to be tough, but I think long term they can do it. I think they can do it. Amazon, yeah, I'm not sure what happened with them. And then we got some of the weed stocks down here. We got Apple, unfortunately, Ferrari, not, not good. And then we got some more marijuana stocks and yeah. All right, so let's wrap this up here. All right, so um, let's just go over some things with Tesla and Roku. By the way, I forgot to show uh, earlier today, I, I saw the video of the Falcon Heavy launch. So, I mean, you've probably have seen it by now, but if not, just like, uh, just search for this article or just search Falcon Heavy launch and they'll show a video of it. And you can see like the rock, these were the rocket boosters that landed. It was such a cool video. There's the Tesla model or the, the, road, the original Roadster in space. That is so cool. Other news with Tesla, they're, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but they're gonna set up some mini solar stores inside Home Depot. So that is amazing. We have Home Depot and Tesla calls, and I am I love both of those companies for investing in, like, they're just solid. And of course I love Tesla, so, you know. So okay, before we go to Roku though, um, I'm gonna talk about the notes I have for Tesla. So they, had a, they reported an adjusted loss of three dollars and four cents per share which versus the three dollars and twelve cents per share that was expected which means you know that's that's good because they reported a smaller loss and their revenue was 3.29 billion uh, versus 3.28 billion estimate uh, so not a huge difference there but their cash burn was only 276 million in the fourth quarter 
where analysts were expecting close to 900 million. So uh, a lot smaller cash burn, even though that's a lot, but it's still a lot smaller than expected. And so shares went up after hours, but then they came back down, then they went up again, and they came back down. So they're pretty much right around even where they closed. But I'm hoping tomorrow um, it'll be okay. I mean, I think long term it'll be fine. The Really, the big thing was the Model 3s. They said they produced 2,425 Model 3s in the fourth quarter, but they delivered 1,542. Um, but they're on target to deliver 2,500 Model 3s per week by the end of the first quarter and then 5,000 per week by the second end of the second quarter or by second quarter or whatever. And since there's 400,000 people that have reserved the Model 3 originally, I think if they can keep growing per quarter, they should be able to deliver all of them by like early next year. And I think since they delivered to the people who ordered first, I don't think it's going to be a huge deal. I don't think that people are going to be that annoyed with it as long as they get their car uh, within, a, within a year or so. I think that'll be fine. And so I'm not too worried about them. Um, let's go to Roku, though, because this is some crazy news that I did not know about. And apparently this article was originally written, like, on the on the first. Totally blew over my head because of all the crap going on with the Dow plummeting. But uh, YouTube TV is now on Roku. I did not know that. And uh, you can record unlimited number of TV shows and other media. Click on the live tab that shows what shows are playing in real time and see personalized recommendations based on your viewing habits. So kind of like Netflix, but with cable. And so it's kind of has the DVR capabilities, looks like. And it says people will also be able to share their YouTube TV accounts with up to five different people, each with their own unique login. So also kind of like Netflix. But this is like cable, guys. This is like, imagine having cable and then like five your like you can give it to like five other people who don't live with you. Who could also use your cable i think that's like amazing uh this is going to be really not good news for like comcast and the cable companies although a lot of them still provide the internet which you still need so it's i guess that you still have to rely on them but you can go you can go with other providers if you do some research depending on where you live you can get other providers that are not like at&t comcast like for example we have wow wireless which is a pretty big one in chicagoland area and then there's some there's even more that serves the downtown chicagoland area which some I heard some are really good, but unfortunately I can't get that here. But anyways, that is crazy. And in this article here, uh, Roku analyst warns short sellers to close their positions. Apparently, um, this guy Andrew left. He originally was saying you should short Roku, but now he's saying you should not do that. And he's saying there's six main points, and he's talking about their fourth quarter earnings that are going to report in February 21st could over deliver, which would be amazing. Because, yeah, we got some calls with them, so that would be amazing if they could do that. Uh, their strategic position with the streaming video space is improving. Their moats are also improving. Moats kind of refers to things that they have that makes it really hard for competitors to get into their same market. So they kind of have like a stranglehold on certain aspects. And with the $4 billion market cap, Roku stock should be added, he said, to the S&P indices in, in March and the Russell indices in June. Uh, resulting in passive money managers buying for the first time. That would also drive the stock up. Uh, this one, not the OIBDA, I forget what that stands for. Um, if you want to put that in the comments, I'm totally drawing a blank. I used to know. And the price per earnings and free cash flow basis make the stock inexpensive. And then the last one, which is the reason I bought the Roku calls again, because you'll, you'll notice in previous episodes I bought it and then sold it. Um, but I bought it again because Roku... Uh, expectation for Roku to be acquired by a larger company remain high given the stock's market cap of $4 billion versus $115 billion for Netflix. So the cheaper it is now, the more attractive they are to be bought out. But once this grows, it's going to be it's going to cost someone a lot more money, obviously, to buy them. So if Netflix, for example, wanted to buy them and kind of get into the cable game, which I think would be a great move, they would be the one uh, they would be the one to have to shell out a lot of money to get them. Now, Apple could buy Roku and four billion is like pennies to them, so they could. So that's why Netflix should really be careful that Apple doesn't buy them first. But it's still possible that Roku just continues to do their own thing and not sells to anybody. So we'll see what happens. But we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, There's gonna be some really interesting um, stories ahead of us with Roku. So we're gonna see what happens with them. But if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And comment below if you have any uh, questions or comments about Tesla and Roku and or anything else in general and thank you guys again so much for watching i hope you had a fantastic night and we will see you tomorrow